Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or MNR Productions and today we're gonna take a look at 10 super inaccurate Lego Star Wars sets. But to save ourselves all some trouble, we're gonna have to set some ground rules first because there's plenty of inaccurate Lego Star Wars sets when you really get down to the nitty gritty. Minifigure scale? We're not talking about that today. I'm not even gonna explain why because it honestly gets me worked up. We're also not gonna knock a set like this, like the Action Battle Echo Base Defense. It clearly isn't supposed to be something that has accuracy in mind and no, there weren't big red and blue targets during the Battle of Hoth. We all know that it didn't need to be said. And while there have been a lot of box art blunders and poor minifigure inclusions, those are gonna end up being separate videos. We'd be sitting here for 40 minutes if I was gonna talk about all those in one video. This video is just about the builds. So let's start out with the 1999 Sith Infiltrator. And the only thing I can really say with this one is that they tried. They tried to make a good Sith Infiltrator, but the technology just wasn't there. Honestly, the best thing about this set is probably that Darth Maul has his little speeder bike that can go inside of the Sith Infiltrator, but as far as the actual Sith Infiltrator goes, all of the more modern ones looked incredible compared to this. They had so much more detail and were so much more accurate. On this one, you actually had to flip a panel up just to give it a little bit of the contouring that's supposed to be on the top of the ship there, riding up and into the cockpit area. So yeah, this one was far from accurate. Next up is the AAT from the summer of 2020. While this one looks pretty good on the surface level, if you start to get into it, it falls apart rather quickly. First First off, the cannons on the side are flipped. The accurate orientation of those cannons is big cannon on the top, little cannon on the bottom. Somehow Lego mess this up and put the little cannon on the top and the big cannon on the bottom. And then the bigger flaw with this one is the cannon on top, which is just incredibly ginormous. Like the entire thing on top is ginormous. It was basically built for that 2009 AAT and then plopped onto this one. It's supposed to stop at the end of what is essentially the front hood of the AAT, but continues on. I'm not really sure what Lego had in mind with this one because they had done the AAT in a similar scale much more accurately five years prior, but for some reason with this one, they decided to go overboard with the cannon on top. Regardless of whether or not you like it, it is inaccurate. I'm only picking on this next one out of all of the Technic LEGO Star Wars sets that came out in the early 2000s for a very specific reason. I recently received a 2002 LEGO Star Wars catalog, and when flipping through it, I found an interesting bit about this set. For most of the characters in this catalog, there's pretty innocuous statements accompanying them, such as, beware the super battle droid, or beware the power of Darth Vader. Add R2-D2 to your Star Wars collection. But for some reason with the Stormtrooper of all things, they decided to say this realistic Stormtrooper moves and shoots. And while it may move and shoot, I feel like realistic isn't quite the word that I would apply to something that looks like this. He was so ugly that everyone died. The end. Next up, we have the Bad Batch Shuttle, which is pretty split 50-50 as to whether people think it's accurate or not. I personally don't find it to be super accurate, and hence it's in this video. It is done in a sand blue Lego color, which in some lighting during the Bad Batch show, it does look to be that color, but it is very apparent in other lighting that the ship is actually gray with some sand blue undertones, just little scratches that have sand blue underneath it, like it was a previous paint job or something that's kind of showing through. But it certainly is not predominantly Sam Blue, as far as I could tell. You know how they do like the Toy of the Year award stamp on some of the Lego Star Wars sets? They should put inaccurate on, on some of them too. <laughs> this set's so inaccurate, I didn't know where to put it. It could have gone in the inaccurate minifigures video. It could have gone in the inaccurate box art video. But to me, it makes the most sense to just have it in the more general kind of set video because the Corporate Alliance tank droid itself wasn't in episode two, but the rest of the set is episode two themed. So while the build is accurate and the figures are accurate to what they're supposed to be, and so is the box art, the actual vehicle itself wasn't in that movie at all. It's pretty wild. Now, it was apparently in some deleted scenes for the movie, which is a trend for LEGO recently. They have released a lot of sets for newer movies that don't end up being in the movie, but I still don't necessarily consider those to be inaccurate. But this one's just blatant. This set came out in 2013. The movie came out in 2002. It's not like they didn't have time to figure out it wasn't in the movie. It just seems to me like it was a deliberate choice to just have the set be episode two based, even though it technically wasn't there, but they could get away with it because it was in the preliminary stuff 11 years prior. So yeah, it's an odd one, but it's on a real technical level inaccurate. It's feeling cold out here. I gotta start that campfire to keep us warm for the assault on Hoth. 
Oh yeah, this one has a litany of issues. It's a UCS set, meaning Ultimate Collector Series, which is like the top level of you're supposed to be accurate if it's a LEGO Star Wars set. And oh boy, did this one not deliver. We have the Hoth Shield Generator, which many people may realize, many people may not, that it's actually supposed to have four separate modules for the Shield Generator. For some reason, the designers thought having three would be a better idea. They also added lookout towers to the top of the Echo Base door which they just weren't there in the movie. I'm fine with taking some creative liberty on a playset, but it is inaccurate in this case. And then my favorite part of the set is the Wampa Cave, or like Wampa Doorway. It's, it's not much of a cave. But the point being, they made the Wampa's cave, and they made his entryway for his cave, but they didn't make it big enough for him to fit in. So he either went on a long business trip and gained a lot of weight and came back, or the Lego designers just didn't make it big enough because they wanted to save money. I'm not sure which it is. Next up is one of our movie blunders, but this one is a ship that ended up showing up in the movie. However, it showed up in a pretty significantly different form than what was shown in the Lego set. The entire color of this thing is wrong. It actually, in the movie, ended up being black, which ended up being a much cooler set when they released it in 2019, but this 2015 version was released in dark gray, which is wrong, and then it also completely one of the main features of Kylo Ren Shuttle, and one of the iconic things, if you want to say there's something iconic about Kylo Ren Shuttle from Episode 7, is that the wings, when in flight mode, would be folded out at about a 45 degree angle. So this set unfortunately missed the mark on a couple of things. I still love it though. It also did have a mini polybag counterpart released a few months later, which was also in the wrong color, that they also re-released a few years later in the right color with the correct feature set. This one to me raises the most questions. The official name for this set is Wookiee Attack, yet we all know in the movie, Keanu Mundi says, What about the droid attack on the Wookiees? So with that in mind, it would stand a reason that the set should have been called Droid Attack. Obviously, LEGO named the set before the movie came out, but that doesn't make it not inaccurate. There are more glaring issues with this set. Issues that have turned out to be quite the charm for a collector like me looking back on it But how did these end up being blue and orange the corporate alliance tank droid is gray And you know how I mentioned with that 2013 corporate alliance tank droid it was in deleted scenes from the 2002 Episode 2 attack of the clones film well in those scenes it was also gray So it becomes very mysterious how Lego ended up with orange and light baby blue for the Corporate Alliance tank droid here. They also made it the wrong color on the spider droid. Maybe Lucasfilm was originally planning to make it a different color for this movie, that's certainly possible, and maybe the most likely answer, but there is a leaked preliminary version of this set in which the Corporate Alliance tank droid is shown as the color tan. So at what point did it become tan, then blue and orange, and then just gray again? I just have a lot of questions as to what happened there. So while I do love this set, it's just like really inaccurate and it's kind of crazy to think how it might have ended up being that way because so many things would have had to have gone wrong. <laughs> And while never officially released, there was supposed to be a mini version of this Corporate Alliance tank droid released, also in the baby blue and orange color. And this is a set that I actually ended up getting all the parts for and building myself to have for my collection, just because it's so cute. That is 10 inaccurate LEGO Star Wars sets. Let me know your favorite inaccurate LEGO Star Wars set in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for more LEGO Star Wars content, and I'll see you next time. Deuces.